You've already heard about land and the land group reawakening, from what I heard. I wasn't part of the first phase, but definitely 2013 gave enough momentum among donors to think about coming together again as a land group. Why land? Um, I think as experienced practitioners, we all know that land is essential in at least two respects um, for our daily work, and that is to boost economic development for poverty reduction, but it's also essential for poor people, because it's, land is very often their only real valuable asset, and um, that's why they need secure land tenure and property rights in order to well, basically be able to invest in the little they have and, and do their share to work their way out of poverty. poverty. Um, why are we coming together now? Um, I think land has always changed hands and, well, sometimes in, in a good way, sometimes, well, in a not so laudable way. Um, but at the latest, since the first food price spike in 20, 2007, 2008, um, did developing countries really experience a spike in land acquisitions? And I had a bit of discussion um, with colleagues about is it land acquisitions or is it other forms of acquiring land? Actually, the spike in interest is in real land acquisition. If you look at, Brian said, we're not the global platform for Africa only, but Africa is a case in point. If you look at 90% of Africa's rural land not being under any type of title or registration, and the majority of African people, in particular the poor, drawing their livelihood from the soil, that is a tricky situation if you have a lot of powerful stakeholders come in and show an interest in land. I'm not saying that this interest should, couldn't help development because many of these areas need investment, but they need responsible investment and they need a new model that donors can help establish. It's not an either or, it's not one side losing access to the land, another one gaining it, but there are quite a number of models that can work for both sides and that can be mutually reinforce it. Um, and we also all know we're working on climate change, we're working on environmental protection, we're working on sustainability. Land is finite and it's essential, it is essential for all our survival. We need to make the best use of it to eradicate poverty and also to feed the what is it now? The latest estimate is 9.5, 9.7 billion by 2015. That is quite a task. So, we came together around the World Bank Land Conference in March 2013 as the leading donors for <coughs> natural and multilateral ones on land and said, well, we really need to do something and at the international level we don't have a one forum. We need some of us meet around the CFS, all of us meet around the World Bank Land Conference once a year, but we should have a more regular dialogue. We should be able to share information, and that also starts with um, all of us knowing better what everybody is doing. So we, we formalized the group under the Global Donor Platform in August 2013. And uh, as I said yesterday, um, we have a sub-page on the Global Donor Working Group um, webpage, like, like all the working groups have, where we are publishing all relevant information, including the terms of reference that we also agreed in 2013. Um, it's the membership is open. It's open to all donors who are interested in land and who have some demonstrated interest or investment in land. Um, there are no membership con conditions other than active participation, we want to have and retain a vibrant group, and we are open to observers. At the moment, we, I think we started out as 21 members, 16 bilateral, 5 multilateral, and our most recent addition as a new member is the IFC, and we hope that others will, will join us as well. Now, um, the UK, DFID has taken the inaugural share, and uh, Germany, uh, represented through the BMZ, and I assume that with Birgit or your colleague Jana Schlugert, um, will take over in August, September 2014, and will have the main chair for about a year. And uh, we will then have an incoming chair, that is the USAID, um, who will take over in 2015, and the UK will, will step down. Our terms of reference also highlight the key objectives. I already said, um, the primary objective is to improve information exchange internally and externally and to widely disseminate lessons learned. 
to improve international donor coordination. And we noticed that in some countries there is quite good coordination, um, um, in others there isn't. So we said wherever there are good local, national, regional processes like the LPI and what is evolving around the LPI, we want to reinforce that but not duplicate it. And uh, we want to agree on joint action where suitable on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, the work plan for year one is a bit more precise. We are working closely with the GLT and LED initiative to develop a global indicator framework on land governance based on existing best practice. Um, you already got an insight into the global donor database that we wanted to get up, up and running and you've seen version 1.0 go online yesterday. Um, we want to coordinate views and inputs into the post-2015 debate and what the role of our land could be. It wasn't really well represented in the, post, uh, in the MDG framework and lessons learned show that, that there is a strong role for land and property rights. Um, and we're taking this forward like most working groups through um, mostly virtual meetings, but we had a first physical meeting in the margins of the CFS like this last year. Uh, and on 28th of March, we're going to have our second meeting in the margins of the World Bank Conference on Land. So, as I said before, observers highly welcome. Um, and we'll have bilateral meetings as required. This is a quick view, snapshot of the, our webpage. If you're highly welcome to, to, to uh, look at the information we've uploaded there. Um, what have we achieved? I said already, Global Donor Database. What we didn't point out so clearly yesterday evening was that we are really welcoming your feedback. What is it that's easy to use? What are you missing? What should be added? What, what, what is not so good? So please do come back to us, make suggestions. We have our emails for the platform, uh, and the leads are all um, included there. So um, we really rely on your feedback. And we would also encourage those among you who haven't joined the effort yet, who have an interest in land, um, consider whether you'd be able to join. We had already a few commitments from other donors who will take longer time to upload their information. I think one of them was JICA, and uh, I think that the, the more complete the picture can be, the, the better. We have also committed to update our data at least twice per year, so um, you should be having, every couple of months you should have a very recent update on what's happening on land. Um, in terms of land in the post-2015 framework, I'm quite pleased we have actually achieved a joint position. I think you all have a copy of our policy brief on your desk. We have abstained from negotiating concrete goals and, and, and targets, but we have common ground on quite some essential details. So I'm happy to discuss that later. Um, another area that, of course, representing um, the UK, I'm quite pleased about was that the group is happy to support the land partnerships that were launched under the G8, UK G8 presidency last year. We launched a, sev a number of seven initial partnerships. Let me just quickly read them out. We have Ethiopia um, partnering with the UK, the US and Germany. We have um, Nigeria and Tanzania partnering with the UK, Burkina Faso, USA, South Sudan, probably a bit on hold now, European Union, Nigeria, European Union, um, Senegal partnering with France, um, and we hope that we will be able to announce another partnership in the next couple of months. This is something that was born out of the determination of the G8 to try and add value to the voluntary guidelines on land. So a year after, after everybody was on land, it's about time that we start, start to really um, help implement them. And these countries were very interested in, in um, securing support from us to take this forward. So this is an effort that we're doing bilaterally, but that um, also involves large <coughs> multilaterals, other, other stakeholders, and we would be happy to see that this initiative flourish. At the moment, these are, these are um, partnerships that, of course, happen at the country level, because everything happens at the grassroots, in particular land, but we would like to add value, and we would also like to see um, other donors in especially non G8 members to think about maybe joining this. And uh, the Global Donor Group is currently helping by uh, publishing uh, progress reports, lessons learned, um, and we're discussing how, in addition, we can add value to this um, budding initiative. Um, and I said many times already, 
the key purpose is information exchange. Internally, this is already happening and it's very vibrant and we have a large number of expressions of interest um, to, to show the dark by externals to, um, to demonstrate to the donor group what is happening or what the donor group should be paying more attention to. This is great. Um, we are currently developing an external strategy for communication that will include online briefings but also other tools. And I'm happy to say we already had our first online briefing for this year. Gregory Myers was kind enough to give an interview on the donor database and we hope that we'll have more information to share as well. So that's why I said to be continued. Again, this is the pre-launch snapshot of the global donor database. And uh, with this, I'm through, and thank you for your attention. <laughs> now, as this group looks a totally, totally different from the slide here, sorry, it's very cheeky. Um, I'd be very, very happy to get your comments, questions, ideas. Um, we really benefit from, from your input and feedback. Thank you very much.